Hello and welcome to my YouTube videos. I'm calling this video Jogless Jogs Part 2. Um, I have a first video on this swatch which I call Jogless Jogs Part 1 and it's showcasing how to work Jogless Jogs of four stripes or more when you don't really want to carry the yarn up the back of the fabric and you want to cut it. This is a jog. This demonstrates what it looks like if you don't do a jog. You get a definite starting and stopping point when you change colors. This is the same changing of the colors but incorporating the jogless jog technique which I'm going to show you today. But also this one the yarn tails are cut on all of these and woven in the back and that's a big part of hiding the jog is weaving the tails in and I show how to do that on a video. You don't always want to carry your yarn up long distances because it will restrict the fabric. So when I have wide stripes I go ahead and cut the tails and then weave them in on the back. And that came out pretty good. So in this video what I'm going to be talking about is jogless jogs in narrower stripes where you're not going to cut the yarn and you are going to carry the yarn up the inside of the work. And I'll talk about two different ways to carry it and which one is better and I'll also show you how to weave these ends in so again on this one so that it conceals the beginning and the end. So that's what this video is about. I also have a third video on stripes in the round and this one is on helix knitting and this is with starting just starting out with a new color there is a jog but you're knitting in a barber pole fashion there's no jogless jogs because you never have a beginning or end except at the very beginning and at the very end I added a third color in here it actually starts right here which is very obvious to see the beginning and the end but there's no carrying of the yarn each color is worked on its row they're endless there's no beginning or end except for at the very start where you add the color and where you end that color. So that's a separate video. There'll be links to these two other videos at the end of this one so you can easily go to those and check them out if you want. So what we're talking about here is how to create a jogless jog. Now I carried the yarn in two different ways on this sample. In the first three white stripes with the green I carried the yarn straight up without twisting it with the other color. And you can see, you can really kind of see that it's torquing the fabric. Can you see that? Starting with this green stripe and up, I twisted the yarns together at the color change and you don't get that little shadow of the color change. Can you see the difference? Can you see how you get this little diagonal line going here? There's no diagonal line up here. Also, in this video, I'm showing you the difference. See, these are staggered between staggering the jogless jog and not staggering it. Again, this is, uh, let's pull this white yarn down. This is a jogless jog, but these are stacked one on top of the other. And we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. First, I'm going to demonstrate how to do a jogless jog. So we've got some stitches on our needles here and we're going to add in our stripe yarn. So I'm going to need a little stitch marker. Here's my stitch marker and we're going to start, we'll say we'll start five, five stitches in from the edge just because it demonstrates better for the video. So we're going to work over to the place where we're going to start our stripe. You can do this on magic loop, two circulars, or double pointed needles. It doesn't matter. The technique is exactly the same. Okay, so we've worked, we'll work five stitches in. Then we're going to start with the white yarn, the second color. So I'm just going to knit all the way around to the end of the white so that all the stitches are white. I'm going to knit all the way around. So I'll see you back in a second after I've knit that round. Okay, so here we are back. We are almost to the end of the first round of the white. So we're going to work right over here till we've finished all the stitches in white. 
that last green stitch is loose because it's not attached. Now, there's two options for creating jogless jugs. One of them is you knit in the stitch below and what that does is basically pulls that green, let's get that tail of the white up here, pulls the green up like this and you knit it. And that just pulls that lower white stitch up into the same row that we're working with. The other option, which is the one that I use, and they both produce the exact same results. I just think uh, the one I'm going to show you is easier. I just slip that first white stitch straight over to this needle. Just like that. You do not want to slip it knitwise because that'll twist the stitch on the next row. You just want to slip it straight over this way. And it is loose right now because the tail isn't attached to anything and you'll be able to tighten that up later. So the two options, one is knitting below or which you can just do this, knit below, and that pulls the green and white up together. Do you see that? Or, put that green back down. That's the same thing as lifting the leg up. Some people will say lift the leg up and then knit them together, or you can just knit below, that's the same thing. Or, my way, it's not my way, lots of people do this. Just slip it straight over. You can try both of these methods and see which one you like the best. The results are the same. Then you put a stitch marker on here because now every stitch all the way around has been worked once, but we want to move over one stitch before the beginning was right here. Now we want the beginning to be here because this stitch was slipped and we're going to be working two stitches of white. We're going to be working a second round in white and when we come back to here we'll want to work that stitch also. So that moved our beginning of round one stitch. So we'll be back in just a second with the end of that round. Okay, we're just completing our second full round. Now this is where we've knit into every stitch twice. This is that stitch that we slipped and it was only worked once. This is why you put the marker on after the slip because you want all of the stitches to be worked twice. This one's only been worked once. We have put the marker there so we've moved the marker one place. Now we knit that stitch. Now every round has two knits in the white, every stitch. So we move the marker, we're going to let go of the white, and we're going to pick up the green. Now does it matter which way you pick it up? There's two things you can do here. On this side you can either, let's spread this out, you can either pick the green up this way, or you can pick the green up this way. Let's do that again. You can either bring the green over the top of the white and start knitting with it, or you can bring the green under the white and start knitting with it. I tried both of those techniques on this other sample that I was showing you. In this technique, I brought the, the new color up under the old color, and I got this diagonal line here, starting right here, I brought the new color up over the old color and you can hardly see it. So let's do it that way. This is how you would do it. The white goes down, the green comes up and over the white. In fact, that's pretty much how I always change colors in any time I'm working more than one color. I bring the new old color down, the new color up over the top and we're going to knit a full round in the green. So I'll be back in a second after I've knit this full round. Okay, now I'm coming up on the end of the first round. You'll want to continue watching this video to the end because I'm going to discuss 
why you would want to use each one of these techniques and the differences between them. So now we're coming up, all of the stitches have got one green stitch in them. We're going to take the marker off. We slip the first green, which is right here, tip to tip. We put the marker back on. Now you can see what's happening is we're, the marker's moving over one time each round, and it's going to continue doing that. I'm going to tighten up that last white stitch so it doesn't look so funky. So these are called staggered jogless jogs. That's what this is, staggered. They go over. This was also staggered. I moved the marker. You can see that even when they weren't jogged, then it goes to the jogs. You can see they move over this way. In this swatch here, they are called stacked, and they're stacked one on top of each other. And we'll talk about the different opportunities for using all of these techniques in just a minute. I want to show you to do this one more time. So now I'm going to knit the second green round all the way around. We'll go through this one more time. Okay, so we're coming up on the second full stitch in the round of this one. And this is the stitch that we slipped right here. We're going to knit it so that it also has two stitches in that column. Then we're going to slip the marker and we're going to pick up that white yarn and we're going to bring it over the top of the green. Remember we drop the old down, bring the new up. The new comes over the old. Now I want to show you this time, I didn't show you last time. This white yarn is attached to this stitch right here. So we want to make sure that stitch is the right size. We don't want it too little or too big. Right now it actually almost looks too little. So I'm going to pull up a little extra yarn. I want it to be the same size as the other stitches. And when you start knitting with this yarn now, you don't want to pull tight on it the first couple stitches or it will disfigure that stitch in the stripe below and it'll be too small and it will show up later. So we're going to knit all the way around and do that jogless jog one more time. Okay, we're coming up to the end of the first round of the color change, which is where you're going to do the jogless jog. Many people get confused and think that it's the first stitch, but it's not. It's You have to do a complete round in the color, new color, then you take the stitch stitch marker off, slip the first stitch point to point, put the stitch marker back on. That's the jogless jog. And then you would continue knitting around. So let's talk about when you would use each one of these techniques. This one right here where you do not move the marker. Because you're not moving the marker you end up having one stitch in that column where the color changes. One stitch in each color. And can you see how that kind of pulls the fabric down like this? It distorts the fabric because in that column it has half as many stitches as the rest of the rows, the rest of the columns. You would not use this for two row stripes. It just would not look good. But let's say you're knitting a garment or a glove or a hat that just has one stripe. This is an excellent technique to use. Or if the stripes are very wide, like you're knitting a sweater and it has maybe stripes that are three or four inches wide, you can use this technique because no one would notice in that many rows. But if it's very narrow stripes like this, this doesn't look good. So when it's narrow stripes, you want to use the jogless jog where you maintain two stitches in every column all the way around. And that makes this pretty much invisible. And I'll show you how to weave this, these ends in in just a second for the very last stitch and the very first stitch. That's a big part of this. Then where you're breaking the yarn, and weaving in the ends on every stripe, you would use this where you have repetitive stripes that are four, six, eight rows uh, wide. But if you're having stripes that are 20, 30 rows wide, you, can, you would still cut the yarn, 
but you would not have to do move your stitch marker one. This one, the stitch marker is moved because you don't want to have a short column here because we have repetitive st short stripes. Does that make sense? So when you have little itty bitty stripes, you don't cut the yarn and you make sure there's two stitches in every column. When you have wider stripes, you have to cut the yarn and weave in the ends. And then if you have really wide stripes, you don't have to do the staggered jogless jog. You can stack them one on top of the other because it will not be noticeable. So now let's talk about weaving in the ends. Let's do this one up here first. This is our last end and we have two um, stitches in each column. So we're going to weave that in so that it, it stops the jog right here. So I'm turning my fabric inside out. And you can see where I carried the yarn. This is where I was twisting it correctly. This is where I was twisting it incorrectly. Actually, it's not even twisted here. It's just pulled straight up. Here's where the twists are. That makes a big difference. So this yarn, the last stitch worked in that white yarn is right here. So the stitches would have continued in this direction. So that's the direction we're going to weave the tail in. I use duplicate stitch for weaving my tails in. I find that it works really good. And we're going to weave over the white. So what's going to happen is it'll pull it to line up with the other white stitches. It's not going to make that stitch smaller. We don't want to do that, but we want to line it up. So we're going to start, let me make this bigger. We're going to do duplicate stitch. So we're going to go here and here. Over the back we're going to follow the previous white round. Don't want to pull it too tight. We want it a little bit tight on that first stitch. And we're just duplicate stitching over the white I have a video on doing this if you want to see a duplicate stitch on the wrong side of stockinette stitch fabric. And we trim that end. And take a look and see how it looks. Where is it? Oh, it's over here. right here. That's the last stitch and see how it pulled it down with that? Can you see that? Let's try the first stitch. Let's do it again so you can see it. Down here is going to be our first stitch right here and it's a little bit big so we're just going to pull it up a little bit but we're going to weave it in so that it pulls it up along these and uh, makes it invisible. So let's do that. Turn it right side, wrong side out. And again, you have to sort of see where is the yarn coming from? Where was the last stitch? It's right there. And it's going to be going this way. So we're going to weave it in the direction it would have gone and we're going to weave it over the white stitches. So we're going to go here. And again, we don't want to pull it up tight enough to shrink that stitch. We want it to be a full size stitch, but we do want it to line up with this row. This is, to me, <laughs> sometimes the most important part. It's right at the end of the video. A lot of people will stop watching before they get to this point. Okay, let's turn that out and see what it looks like. There's the tail weave. It's right there. It pulled this stitch up next to that one. See how it did that? Isn't that nice? Very cool, huh? So, if you like my videos, please subscribe to my video, my YouTube channel, and also share my videos. You can share them on Facebook, Pinterest, wherever you want, on YouTube, and um, hit the little like button down there. That helps me a lot. 
I hope you come back and watch some more of my videos. There's a link to the other videos that I talked about right about now in this video. So happy knitting and hope to see you back soon. Bye-bye.